Well, the last one I want to talk to you about, you mentioned it earlier, Nate Robinson against um, Jake Paul. And, uh, oh, my God, I have to clarify, in the Ryan Garcia clip we put up last week, I said I'm not a fan of this amateur boxing. I, I want to clarify. I love amateur boxing. I don't like when guys who aren't boxers get in the ring for these, like, spectacles, celebrity boxing. I mean, you can watch street fights on YouTube. They're, they're everywhere. This was... Uh, um. This was scary uh, for Nate Robinson, and I'm sure for his fans and family. But, I mean, when I'm watching it, I'm like, he's had how long to prepare? Did he spar? I mean, it was like zero fundamentals. Everything looked wrong, and Jake Paul looked like, you know, uh, 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 he looked like a fighter. I, I don't want to say very technical, but Nate Robinson lunging in, chin up in the air, and Jake Paul just beat the crap out of him and eventually knocked him out cold on his face. Very scary moment when he was out. I also found it interesting that there wasn't medical personnel in the ring immediately. When when Nate Robinson finally came to and was trying to get up, he was literally like on all fours struggling to get up. I mean, at the very least, you think they'd have a stool in there and medical professionals would be tending to him, picking him up if it was appropriate to pick him up. He was a mess. And it was, like I said, very scary moment. Jake Paul also got a uh, WBC medal after the fight. Not sure for what, but... Anyway, what'd you see Metals in that Medals fall, right? Medals fall. Yep. Uh, Participation trophies. I think plenty of... They was, I, I wonder if they went down to, you know, right across the bridge from me, Canal Street in uh, Chinatown. They got, they got belts. They got belts for everything. <laughs> they do. They, I mean, again, they might turn green if you, if, if you walk in the rain with them. <laughs> Don't go out in the rain with them. But... Uh, <laughs> There's plenty of different belts and knockoff belts, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, you know, uh, Gucci, whatever you want. Uh, I this is a cautionary tale. This is what I'm about to say. You have to stop. Someone's gonna get, and you you did a good job with it, Ken. Someone's gonna get hurt. You have to stop whatever you want to call these matches where you know you're putting these celebrity matches on thinking that because you put a guy in who was a good athlete a great athlete Nate Robinson was an NBA player special athlete i mean you got to be special to play in the NBA and a small guy his size so this is a special athlete special guy and he won the slam dunk contest. I mean, he's got all those kind of physical attributes. That means diddly squat. When you're getting in the ring with someone who knows how to fight, someone with some experience, because it's not about the athleticism. It's not about those things that I just gave him credit for. It's about knowing that you can go in a realm that you can go into a place in the ring and control your fear. You, It's all about controlling your fear in a fearful place. I can't put it more bluntly, more simply. A lot of people that have never been in boxing have never, which is most people, never had the experience of getting in the ring may not be able to understand what I'm putting forward but it's about controlling your emotions your fear it's about being in control in an uncontrolled environment being calm in an uncalm place being able to see in a place where it's hard to see because of those emotions, because of those fears, because of all that going on. You can't take, I don't care what kind of an athlete, and Nate Robinson, great, great athlete. You can't take him and put him into that realm, that place where the oxygen is sucked out, where you can't breathe because the tension, the fear, the anxiety is so great, and you've never been in that place. I don't care how many hundreds of thousands of people you, you play basketball in front of. You've never been in this realm. 
one-on-one with a guy who wants to hurt you, with what that brings forward, what that creates. You have to have experience in that realm to deal with it. Otherwise, you're a blind man. And I mean literally blind because you're so out of control, you can't even see things. I'm not saying that Paul is anything great, but he's a guy that learned to box. He took boxing. He's been taking it for a couple years now. I think I'm not sure of the time span, but he's been sparring with real fighters. He's had a couple fights, at least one other fight, but probably had some other exhibition fights. Uh, He's been in this realm before. He's been doing this. He knows what it feels like. He knows and can identify with what takes place, the metamorphosis that takes place, the transition of oneself that takes place when you get in that ring. The ninjas that come over the walls and attack you and take your breath away. Take your mind away. Take your confidence away. He understands. He's been in that. He's put his foot into that, into that pool where he understands and he's prepared for that to the level that he's prepared for it. He's not prepared with a professional fight. He's not prepared with a quality amateur fighter of, of a certain status. But he's compared, but com- he's prepared way more than a guy who is venturing into this place for the first time. Completely ignorant. Yeah, ignorant of what is going to take place, what it's going to feel like, how quick it's going to come to him, the realization that he's not ready for this, that he's never... It would be like taking a guy to the moon and putting him out on the moon's surface and taking his space helmet off where he has no oxygen. (laughs) I mean, really, that's the best way I can get it across to people. That's what it would be like. And that's what it was like for poor Nate. He, it's not that he didn't know what he was doing. I'm sure they taught him basics, jab, step in with your... Your orthodox step with your left foot first with the jab, throw the right hand, let the jab set it up, then throw the right hand, you know, move your head a little bit after your punch, be aware of your range. I'm sure they talk, means nothing because he hasn't had that experience of being on that surface without a space helmet on to breathe what is a whole different kind of air. And it showed. It showed. For you guys that just thought, oh, he didn't know what he... And I wasn't where he didn't know what he was doing. He might have known what he wanted to do. But he wasn't in control of himself. He lurched. He ran into punches. Lurched into punches. That's what a man does when he's out of control. When, when he's... I'm going to be very careful with this. When he's terrorized, there, there, there is an element of being terrorized where you're not used to these conditions, what you're going to feel when you're alone with a man in a ring where, you know, you haven't been drinking. Yeah, I'm being serious. You haven't been drinking. You, 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 the guy didn't insult you or anyone in your, you know, right then, or, or smack you where you just react without thinking, where you just, oh, and you throw back. What happens after that, all right, that depends how tough you are, how developed you are, what you know how to do. But when you get slapped, boom, you throw back. Or, or the guy insults you, you know, because your anger gets you to that. He didn't have that at that moment. I don't care what they said before the fight. He didn't have, he was alone, in that locker room with hours to think about basically going to the electric chair. Yeah, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. And in his mind, that's where he went. 
And that's why he, I don't care, he might have been taught, you might have, if we went back a few weeks ago and saw him in the gym, he might have looked okay on a heavy bag, on the pads. I don't know. I'm sure, he probably did. But that's why you saw him, ah, wow, ah, you know, lurching into forward into punches. Where I tweeted just before it happened, I tweeted, Paul doesn't have to do anything. He shouldn't come in because he'll, he'll run past him coming in or he'll clash into him. Just give him a little feint and let the guy basically launch himself into one of your punches. Really. I, I tweeted that. I said, just feint him, let him launch himself, bang, and catch him a right hand. And, you know, basically that's what he did. So uh, give credit to Paul. He takes the sport serious. He goes out there and he does training, you know. Um, but his matchmaking, if he's going to continue with it, let's, let's get some guys that have actually been in the ring the way he has. Let's, let's make it a little fair. <laughs>